Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be creating clay circles with texture to represent the moon, which we are going to put behind the clay owls that we made last week. Are you ready to learn how to create your moon with texture? After the demonstration, when you head to your table, you'll find pieces of paper to work on because remember, clay will stick to the table. You'll find your clay, your cup of tools, paper plates, and one rolling pin. To make your clay moons with texture, you are gonna need the following tools. First, a piece of clay, then a rolling pin to help flatten it out, a texture pad to create the perfect texture, a knife and a paper plate for the perfect circle and a wooden tool for adding your name and one cue on the back. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take this ball and we have to flatten it out. And we want it to be about as thick as a book. So the first thing you're gonna do is stand up because you're gonna need all the strength in your arms and your shoulders to flatten this out. You're going to take one hand and put another hand over it and you're going to press you can lean right into that clay and what you do on one side you're going to have to do to the other so flip it over and press again one hand over the other and try and get that as flat as you can now it's not going to get flat enough to create a clay moon we're gonna use this paper plate to cut out the perfect circle for our moon. And as you can see, the plate is bigger than the clay. This is where our rolling pin will come in. There's only one rolling pin per table, so you're going to have to share. Someone will be the first person to use it, and someone will be the last. But that's okay, because we're all going to be able to get this done today. So I'm going to take this rolling pin. I'm not gonna hold it by the handles, I'm going to take my two hands and I'm going to push forward and backward with my rolling pin to flatten out my clay. And I'm using all the strength in my shoulders and body. And do you see how that clay got longer and flatter? But it's not wide enough for our plate. So I'm going to carefully peel up my clay, turn it over, and now I'm going to roll it opposite way. Put two hands on my rolling pin and press forward and back. And now I'm going to check. Is it big enough? Almost. Give it another roll up here in the corner. Now my clay is large enough that I can cut out a circle. But before I cut out my circle, I need to add my texture. So I'm gonna grab a texture pad from the cup and I'm gonna press a texture into my clay. Look at all that great, amazing texture on that. This is gonna be a beautiful moon to go behind our clay owls. Now that I've put my texture in there, I'm gonna take my plate plastic knife and do my very best to try and cut a circle. If you need help, raise your hand and the teacher will help you cut it out. Now our extra clay, we're going to save and set aside because it can be used for another project later. So now I've got this perfect clay circle to be my moon. But before you go put it over on the shelf, we need to know whose is whose. So I'm going to gently flip it over, just like we did with our clay owls, and I'm going to put my name in the back. But be careful. If you carve too deeply into your clay, you're going to create holes in the front. I was careful, you can read my name, one Q for first grade Quinlan, and it did not cut through the front. Now that my moon is finished, and I've carefully put my name and a one Q on the back without making a hole in the front, 
I'm going to gently flip it over and pick it up, carry it over and place it on a shelf behind the door. Make sure that your texture side is facing up. We don't want to flatten out or smooth out any of that beautiful texture you created. Then head back to your seat and clean up your tools. At the back of the room, you will find that there are two sinks, one on the left and one on the right. One is for washing brushes, cups, and tools, and the other is for washing your hands. Remember to wait on the blue line, stop, and wait your turn. There should only be two people washing their hands at a time. Follow the directions for washing your hands and then head back to the rug. Once you've put all your tools back in the cup on the tray and you've washed your hands and dried them off, come back and please have a seat on your shape on the rug for a story. Today we will be listening to The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Dark by Jill Tomlinson. 